So today we have the great pleasure to chat with Judy Hewitt, who's very well loved fibre artist here in The Hunter. And Judy did a beautiful portrait of yourself for Ain't the Archies. Would you Thank like you. to talk to us a little bit about yourself as well as about um, the process you went through of reproducing yourself so many times. I think it was nine times. Nine times, yeah. Yes. So nine times Judy. What a treat. Nine times Judy. This is, this is me. Here I am. Um, I live in Morissette. And so I, you know, I live a fairly solitary artistic existence, I guess. Um, I've been making quilts for, I think I made my first patchwork quilt when I was 21, and that's going back a long time. So I was always interested in patchwork. I really don't know where it came from, apart from the fact that it turns out that I had grandmothers and great grandmothers who also made stuff. And so I think it's in the genes, but it's something I've always been interested in. And so I started making patchwork quilts and then they developed over time. They became very bright and colourful. Well, they were always bright and colourful even to start off with. Um, and then, you know, I've had a, a career um, teaching. I'm very fortunate to have taught a lot in the, the US and I've taught in England and Germany and New Zealand and all over Australia. So it's been a, a fabulous textile existence for me. And then when I moved from Sydney to here to Morissette about 18 years ago now, um, I didn't have any, um, didn't have any studio at that point. All my fabrics were in store and I thought it's a perfect time to start doing something new. So I began making quilts about Dora Creek, which is about a minute and a half outside my back door. And I started painting fabric, um, doing a little bit of monoprinting on the fabric. Um, I wasn't into dyeing so much, but really sort of painting, discharge, discharging fabric and all of that kind of thing. And so I've been working on quilts about Dora Creek for ever since, uh, with diversions into um, making quilts about the travels that I've done on the Silk Road and places further afield. Um, I, don't, I don't stick to one thing. I'm always excited about starting something else and something new. So, you know. I, and what was it about um, doing a self-portrait for Ain't the Archies? Well, I always wanted to do a self-portrait. I've got a sketch in my sketchbook going back for about 20 years of a self-portrait. And I, because I've been sort of working in the studio fairly really hard for the last couple of years and the the other textile artists I know are sort of scattered all over the all over the place all over the country and I thought well I wonder if I could do something um take up this idea of a, a self-portrait that I'd always wanted to do and see just what would what would happen with it and it like everything it took on a life of its own and became something that was not what I intended in the first place but it just sort of evolved and the process, it looks like um, the photograph that you sent to me, which is similar to the earrings that you've got on today. You look very similar to your portrait. <laughs> no, these are not the same one. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us about how you did that, because it looks to me like you've done, you know, obviously a repeat um, screen. Yeah. Mm. What I did was um, I took a selfie. I thought, okay, you know, I'll, take, I'll take a selfie. Um, printed it out. And I put it on my, I've got this light box and I put it on the light box and I thought, okay, so I actually did a drawing. I did nine drawings and they all were different. Um, even though I, I wasn't tracing exactly over the, over my selfie, I was just doing a fairly free drawing over the top. And each one of them was different. And because I was experimenting to start off with to see what I could do. I, I experimented with, you know, printing coloured images of myself and I didn't like that at all. And I thought, no, I really like that hands-on approach where the I make the mark and the mark tells me something and it leads me on to the next mark. And so that's how it began. And, and I looked at these images and I thought they are all different. And I thought this is capturing 
moods. And then I thought, okay, so what I need to do now is to do nine drawings that capture different moods and then colour them appropriately. And it ended up, you know, turning out to be fairly bright. But so, so I did the drawing with um, textile ink and then I screened the colour background over each one. And so I've got moods from ambivalence to feeling reasonably happy to feeling old to feeling a bit sad to feeling introspective. Um, all of those sorts of emotions. And I thought, well, what I would do, because I love patchwork quilts so much, and I haven't made one for a year or so, I suppose. And I thought, oh, I'll just go back to what I really enjoy doing and that, that making of the patchwork and assemblage and stitching and the process of putting something together. And so I, I began all the fabrics in the quilt began as white fabrics apart from the, the red around the border which I've discharged but I thought okay now I have these skills to produce things that I used to buy commercial fabrics for and so I had a great deal of fun printing and painting the fabrics and then assembling them into a patchwork quilt with a sawtooth border which is a an element that I have loved forever, those triangles. <coughs> and I looked at it and then I thought, that's me in lockdown. And it didn't, it was sort of, it sort of evolved. It didn't, it didn't set out to be that, but that's what, how it ended up. So very it's effective, a isn't it, Jude? That, um, <laughs> it's very effective, that border, because it does enclose you. Yeah. And yet, you know, the, the, the colours are really, uh, you know, they're really strong and sort of in your face sort of colours. Um, and I guess there's, you know, there's a bit of, um, oh well, you know, diff well, as I said, the different kinds of moods, I, I suppose there's a bit of anger in there as well at being locked down. Um, but it just, it just was interesting the way it just went from one thing to the other i love it the many faces of you and it's such a powerful piece it is very bright and colorful but it's very reflective of the judy i know anyway given we've known each other for almost a decade now thank you Anne. thanks it's been a great privilege to actually to you know be a part of this and to look at what everybody else has done it's just incredible what an amazingly talented group of people um, and and the differences in each of the each of the works is is just fascinating. I'm so pleased that you're part of it. So thank you so very much. It's a treat to have you up on my wall, even though I can't look at you every day. But hopefully <laughs> the gallery will open again soon. Thank you, Anne. It's it's and thanks for inviting me to be part of it. And and thanks to you know everybody else for the marvelous stuff that they did.